You are a narrow minded, honestly, Wallahi. God can speak. It's in Hebrews, I think. Hebrews 6.13, ladies and gentlemen. How did I get that? Hebrews 613, ladies and gentlemen. How did I beat both of them? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what it says in Hebrews 16.13. I'll, I'll come and debate you in a second. I'll come and debate you in a second. In Hebrews 13.16. Sorry, 6.13, it says this. For one, for when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. Amen. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is an insult to the honor of God for God to swear by anything else. When we make oaths, ladies and gentlemen, we make oaths by things that are sacred. We say things like, I swear by my mother's grave, or I swear by the temple, or I swear by God, or I swear on my mother's life, or I swear upon the Bible. We say these things because these things are important to us. We value them more than ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. But who can God value more than himself? Who is greater than God that he should swear by it? No one. And so God can only swear by his own name. He can only swear by himself. And the God of the Bible only swears by himself because nothing is more valuable than himself. And so he cannot swear by anything else. But think about the dishonor that the Quran reaps upon Allah by saying that Allah swears by the life of Muhammad, that Allah swears by the Quran, that Allah swears by the star, that Allah swears by the dawn. Allah is taking an oath by the things that he has created. How can he do such a thing? Such a promise is worth nothing. If I said, that I swear by the shit of a rat. <laughs> Would you believe such an oath? If I said to you that I swear by the life of a gnat or of a flea, would you believe such a promise? And how much is the star to Allah? It is as a flea to me or the rat shit to me. So Allah is swearing by things beneath him and his promises are empty. So his promises are empty. He insults himself by swearing to things lesser than him he commits lesser shirk he is a hypocrite for telling you to not commit lesser shirk whilst he does it and he is fickle because he commands things as forbidden even though they're not actually evil by contrast the glory of Yahweh is that he only swears by himself for all of creation is beneath him. He commands us to do evil, to, to forbid evil because it is evil and to do good because it is good. And these things reflect his nature and he himself does that which he commands, ladies and gentlemen. And in that, ladies and gentlemen, you see a stark difference between the God of Islam and the God of the prophets from Abraham through to Jesus Christ. We as Christians believe in oath taking. As Christians, our lives should be sealed in by the oaths that we make. Priests take vows. Couples getting married take vows. But I want to say to you, if you're a Christian plumber, you should take vows in your business life. Vows never to cheat a customer. Vows always to be honest in your taxes. Vows always to do a proper job to the best of your ability. As an evangelist, I also 
also have vows. Let me read to you my vows. These are my vows as an evangelist. And I say them before you all right now. So these are my vows as an evangelist. And if you are an evangelist, I want to encourage you to take vows as well. This is my public declaration of vows as an evangelist. To seek out the lost in season and out of season, with all the resources at my disposal, until such pursuit is no longer possible. To pursue my own discipleship in the Lord, with all my heart, mind, soul and strength, in pursuit of all of my own vocation and sanctification and to fight valiantly under the banner of Christ against sin, the world and the devil in the defense of the or on earth because the heaven is God's footstool sorry, the heaven is God's throne and the earth is God's footstool and so when we make vows, ladies and gentlemen, we declare our commitments as something that we simply mean to do. Our yes means yes, and our no means no. We don't swear on anything else, because to swear on anything else is to say that we are not true to our word ladies and gentlemen and nothing is worthy of being swore upon but God alone and that is the way of the Christian Muslims commit polytheism and their Quran has shirk any questions ladies and gentlemen going once Yo, happy Passover brother how are we doing peace be with you any questions ladies and gentlemen when are oath not acceptable okay ladies and gentlemen so the question is as a Christian when is an oath not acceptable the answer to that question is if you make if you make a commitment to sin if you say you're going to do something and then you learn that the thing that you're going to do is a sin you don't have to keep your word because in the Christian faith that which you swear must only be oaths towards the good if it's not towards the good you don't need and can't make a promise to do it any other questions ladies and gentlemen okay fine go on sister yeah, the Russian Orthodox Church, yes. Okay, great question, fair question. So in answer to the question about the invasion of Ukraine, given the fact that the Ukrainian government does persecute Christians, uh, a point that is valid, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that I condemn the Ukrainian government's persecution of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and of the Russian Orthodox Church, and I condemn the Ukrainian government's appointment of a Satanist as an ambassador. However, these things do not justify Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They are condemnable. I do not support the government of Ukraine. But the reason why I condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine is because Putin is sending good Russian Orthodox young men to kill other good Orthodox Ukrainian men and he is doing it because he worships the state more than Jesus Christ and he is doing it because he cares more about the interests of Russia and its failed policies than he does about defending Christians. Why hasn't he defended Orthodox Christians in Armenia against 
the Islamist terrorist state of Azerbaijan. If he was truly orthodox, if he truly cared about defending Christians, why is his foreign policy in Ukraine justified by defending the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which should be defended, but abandoning millions of Orthodox Christians in Armenia? Why isn't he stopping Azerbaijan from persecuting its native Christian populations? Why isn't he challenging Bashar al-Assad, his ally, who persecutes the Christians? Putin worships Russia, and that is why he is wrong to invade Ukraine. Any other questions on any topic, ladies and gentlemen? No, no, no. Going once? Let, let someone have a chance and then I come back to you. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, on any topic? If I was Okay, go on. So the question is, do animals have souls and do they go to heaven? Different Christians have different opinions on this, but I am of the opinion animals don't have souls and they don't go to heaven. But I want to correct an assumption behind the question, which is that heaven is the destination as Christians that we go to. It's not. Paradise is a new creation of heaven and earth, where we dwell in heaven and earth where God's presence is and that's actually the final destination when Jesus said to the thief this day you will be with me in paradise that place where the thief is is only a temporary place it is not the main place it is a place where souls wait until the resurrection and the judgment and then God will create a new heaven and a new earth and we shall dwell there with him. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? On any topic? Take this opportunity because I know the moment I stop filming, someone's going to come forward and want to talk. Go on, sister. Um, I had a discussion earlier about a man who was on the gnostic side of things yeah. and he was saying that basically the gospel come after the letters of Paul they come in the second or third century and that there is no historical evidence for the gospel and the historicity of Jesus Christ on earth dying on the cross resurrecting and he was saying that he was sacrificed in the heavens not on earth okay so what's your position on that so uh, I even think I might know who you're talking about yes right but the reality is this is this is totally untrue. I know. Clement of Rome is quoting from the Gospels. Irenaeus and Ignatius is quoting from the Gospels. The Didache is clearly referencing Gospel teaching and it's very clear by the fact that these are all early first century or first century documents that the Gospels were in circulation in the first century. So they're all first century? Yeah. They're all first century. When someone says that they're not first century, and I know exactly who told you this, he's literally making spurious arguments that ignore the quotations of the church fathers and ignore the fact that the church fathers show a familiarity with the gospels they also also the that the idea that paul wrote first is absolutely true but paul wrote about a real crucifixion in this world not some cosmological crucifixion because he talked about a resurrection he says in multiple places Christ was and the all the apostles do that Christ was crucified according to the flesh that he suffered according to the flesh well what's flesh ladies and gentlemen so clearly Christ's suffering is in this world such people ignore these statements because they want to we shouldn't pay them any mind. Have you got a question, Madam? Yes. Um, how does salvation 
Okay, so how, as a Christian, do I believe salvation was achieved before Jesus Christ? It was achieved by Jesus Christ and his crucifixion and resurrection. But the result, the meritorious grace of that crucifixion goes down through history. And so all those that accept the truth by faith that they were exposed to before Jesus Christ, their faith is made meritorious by what Christ does on the cross. I believe it because in Revelations, it says the Lamb of God who, was, who died for us, who was crucified before the foundations of the world. And so Christ's act of salvation is what makes all meritorious acts worthy of any merit at all, including all the actions of Moses, all the actions of David, all the actions of Isaiah and Jacob, all the actions of the temple, all the temple sacrifices, they're all pointing to Jesus and they are only beneficial because of Jesus, whose act goes forward in time across the world and back down through time. Anyone who is saved is saved because of Jesus and not apart from Jesus. So I'm not going to say, no, not everyone goes to hell before the crucifixion. But because Christ said to the person who died before him, the, no, no, sorry, he said, to the, he said to the prisoner that this person would be with him this day in paradise and he died on the same day. The soul, but there are souls in Hades, according to Peter. And Christ's soul descends to Hades and preaches the kingdom of God and the gospel to the souls in Hades, liberating those souls from Hades, which is a, a place of waiting, a place of anticipation for those souls that are before the crucifixion and resurrection. But it's not hell. It's another place. Does that make sense? Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? So, um, you see when it mentions uh, Abraham's bosom, is that where they would be, is that where Jesus descended to? Because it says that he, was des he descended to the lower parts of the earth. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's clear where it's where where this place is it's just a place we know to be hates we can call it hates but it's not clear and abraham's bosom is actually a reference to heaven not hates okay any other any other questions uh, the, the, I mean, I'm not an expert of the, the, the linguistics of it, but I believe that hell is referred to as a different place. The place where the souls are referred to in Peter's letter. I don't believe they're the same word. I, I, I may be corrected on that. I'm not saying I know for certain. It's kind of difficult on this because... Well, let him finish his point. What's your... Yeah, but Gehenna is not the same. Gehenna, Gehenna, Gehenna is not hate. These are two different words. And they're used in different contexts to talk about different states. So that's one of my reasons for believing. Exactly. By the way, this is a party for one of you. Any other questions before I go off and talk to someone? I just want to say thank you for your work. Uh, you're a defender of today. Thank Amen. you so much. You're an orthodox. Thank you, Christ is thank you I know it's not Easter for you yet, but for us it's Christ is